Hi, I'm Kiva and welcome back to DIY with KB. Today we're doing a Pottery Barn wall art DIY. I know I normally stick to restoration hardware, but this piece from Pottery Barn is so high end, plus it's sold out. So if you want it, you gotta make it. If you like this DIY or any of my other content, please like this video, subscribe to DIY with KB, and connect with me on Instagram at kiva.brent, where I show you my daily dupes, decor, and DIY. Let's get into today's video. Okay, so the first step in this DIY is getting a canvas. As per usual, I went to Michael's. I actually ended up getting a different tier of canvas. I got the level two canvas because they were 50% off right now. Um, I don't know when that promotion ends, but that's why I got it. So it ended up being really affordable. I'll put the price of it on the screen because I don't, oh, the receipt's right here. Look at that. 22. Oh, so you can do this whole time? Yeah. You just play me like that? Okay, it's $22 and it's 24 by 36 which is a good size, but I'm starting with this canvas and I got this 100% wool roving from uh, Michaels. I also ordered some online, so I'm gonna compare, but since we're trying to recreate that um, image from Pottery Barn, since it's currently out of stock and it was so expensive when I tried to buy it, it was like the main price and then the shipping was like $150 and quite literally nothing is worth $150 shipping to me. But um, so I got my own, so I'm gonna compare them, make sure I can get the look that I want. First step is going to be unpacking this canvas and actually just like rearranging the wool on here so I can see like how I wanna do it. And then I'm going to paint the canvas. I think I'm actually gonna use like a roller that you use for a wall instead of a brush so that everything can look nice and even so that you're not distracted by the streaking. But I'm just gonna get started with that. Before we get into the video, I just wanna say if there are any DIYs that you want me to do, please let me know in the comments below. If you watch my home goods shop with me, I say all the time, oh, I could totally DIY this. If you actually wanna see me do it, let me know and I will do that for you because I'm all about making things more accessible to people and more affordable. Okay, so the wool feels like wool. Surprise, surprise. The first thing I tried to buy was wool felt because the name on the picture is like felt picture. But when you just get like normal felt, it actually comes in like a sheet um, and it can't tear apart like this, which is what we want. What I was thinking, if you couldn't find the wool felt, is that you could actually use some cotton and dye it because they sell that at the store and you can always find that everywhere. I even think they have like some sort of like cotton at the Dollar Tree even. I should have actually checked there. Um, but I'm just pulling it apart to see how I can achieve the texture that I want. So you definitely obviously want to use a paint tray, but I have my box and it's good enough for me. To do this, I would definitely suggest using a roller so you get that even look and you don't have any brush strokes. Um, I, like I said, I use the box as my paint tray, but to do this, you could grab a paint tray, your roller, the actual roll to go on the roller, um, and then you can lay down a tarp or something like that underneath your canvas to make sure that you don't get it um, on any of the surfaces. But as you can see here, I just use an Ikea bag and honestly, it worked out fine. And so this is from Michaels and this is from Amazon. And if you've seen the picture, I'll put it up right here. The picture of the thing that I'm emulating, this is closer in color. And when I ordered this online, let me tell you how much it was. I want to know. So this was $12.99, which is more expensive than this one. But honestly, it feels like way better quality. I just need to figure out how I'm going to like space it so that it like looks nice. So I guess it's just gonna be me playing around. Before committing to the Super 7070 adhesive, I tried it on a piece of paper. If you're ever doing a DIY project, it's really important to test the thing that you're gonna use first to make sure it's gonna turn out well, or else you ruin all the work you've already done. Um, I ended up really liking this adhesive. It sticks well, it's easy to work with, and it didn't destroy my hands, which was really nice. All right, so I was just smack talking the wool from Michaels, but turns out we need them both because I love the color of this one, but the texture of the one from Michaels is really helping us to achieve this look, which is what the actual thing looks like. And to achieve the look, I'm using my scissors and I'm cutting it once I've like mixed them together so that it's like stringy. I don't really know what to call it. Just like zoom in and then you can see. It looks like it's like built up, which is kind of what we're looking for. So I'm doing all of this. Then I'm gonna lift it up and then put the adhesive down 
And then I think that's gonna be it for this. Then I'm going to like get all of this extra stuff off. And yeah, I feel like I'm kind of achieving what we're going for. Okay, so I laid out my first layer. I mixed everything up, cut it. It was a tedious process, but very necessary because I want it to be an even first layer. Now I'm gonna go in with my Super 77 um, and make sure that one, it sticks to the canvas and then lay my first layer down, so. Pressing that in. It works? Nice. Okay, so obviously this is my first time using this and it's really good. It's acting as a great adhesive, but what I will say is everywhere you spray, it doesn't end up having that white residue, but it does look glossy. So wherever you spray, you're gonna have to end up covering, so be really intentional with where you put this. Looking like that, I think it's actually looking pretty good. I'm just gonna keep adding more so that you can't see any black at all. And then we're going to frame it out for like the shadow box look. I just wanted to put in a little tip that if you're going to use this adhesive, you have to remember that wearing gloves isn't the most realistic because you really need to press things in. So I ended up using a paintbrush to really push the wool in because obviously it would have just got stuck to my gloves. Um, and this is just me blabbering on, which I tend to do, so. Initially, I thought that I wanted to use these planks of wood that I got from Michaels. They were super affordable, like literally a dollar or two each. Um, and I really liked them, and I had this um, wood stain hanging around, so I thought I was gonna use that. But I didn't like how red it ended up turning out. Um, so I wanted to include this just to show you that DIYs don't always go perfectly on the first try. Sometimes you have to try again. Um, but everything that I was using was really affordable, so I didn't really, like, you know, take a hit for having to buy new things. And here you'll just learn how to stain. You can get a shop towel. I get these amazing shop towels from Amazon, and you just rub it on the wood, and then you try to evenly disperse it, and however much you put on kind of is a reflection of how it turns out. So we left off yesterday with staining these wood planks, but then I decided that I thought these wood planks were a little too thin and that I wanted a wood that was a little bit thicker um, to really emulate that Pottery Barn vibe. So I went to Home Depot and I picked up some wooden planks. I cut them at the store. You can always cut them at the store because one, they have good measuring tapes, they have a good saw, and you know that you have everything that you need before you leave the store. So instead of using the stain that I used last night, which was a little bit too cherry for me. I got this stain, which is classic oak. And so we're gonna see how that turns out. But before I do that, I'm actually gonna sand down the edges where I actually cut, um, just so that they don't, it doesn't splinter and we can really easily make our frame. So we're going to let that dry and then after that we are going to attach it to the picture and put some acrylic on top. Even though I measured the wood at the store, I forgot to think about the fact that um, I want it to sit on top of the frame, not like frame the piece. Um, so that's my bad, but that's the reality of the situation. I am going to measure so that it fits perfectly rather than the constraints of this one and this one which are lined up on the edges here. Um, I'm going to measure it. I'm actually just gonna look at it because honestly that's gonna end up being better than me using a tape measure. And then I'm gonna use my electric saw to cut it. But I think how I wanna start is by putting these ones in first so that they're in place so that I know that I'm cutting correctly and we can fit them in to see if it fits. Okay. I feel like that's smarter. Sounds good. When we were first thinking about this project, I thought that we could use hot glue to secure the panels and then I also thought about E6000, which I think definitely would have worked, but it would have taken a lot of time and it wouldn't have been as stable. So we ended up using tiny nails and hammered them through the wood of the canvas itself um, and it ended up working out. We just needed two people, one to stabilize and one to hammer. 
Next, to fit the remaining wood in place, I had to um, cut them down using my handsaw. If you're using a handsaw, please be careful if it's electric and moves really quickly. Get someone to spot you, or you can have them cut the wood for you at Home Depot, like I said before. And then I just spent some time sanding that piece down so that it would fit perfectly, because of course the handsaw is not perfect. Okay, we've made the frame. Um, and now I'm just going over and finishing touching this up before we put the acrylic on top. And I keep saying I'm going to put the acrylic on top, but if it doesn't work, then there's not going to be any acrylic, and then I'm going to be so embarrassed. That's okay. I think it looks pretty similar. What do you think? Yeah, I think it looks really nice. I like the wood color. Like, the texture is definitely not identical, but also, like, did you think I was going to sit here and, like, weave some wool? Like, no. <laughs> So this is the finished product. I'm gonna put um, an acrylic sheet on top, hopefully, to give it that real finished look. But this is what it looks like in the end. This literally took me like a day to do this project and it turned out really well. It looks very similar to the Pottery Barn one and it cost me a fraction of the price. I will calculate how much it cost, but honestly, it was well worth the effort. I got the acrylic sheet from an old frame from um, I think either Ikea or from Michaels. It was just laying around, but you can order them on Amazon. They are, you know, probably about $15 a sheet in this size, and they generally sell in packs of two. But to stick it down, I actually just put a little dollop of Gorilla Glue hot glue on the edges, and it dried completely transparent, which is really nice because I was worried about that. Um, but it really gave it that finished glassy look without having to buy glass. This is what it ended up looking like. There's a lot more texture than the Pottery Barn piece, but I actually really like that. But otherwise, I think they look pretty similar. After one day, the project is finally done. Altogether, this only cost me about $50. I love the way that it turned out, and I got this cute Pottery Barn dupe for almost no money. And I was able to get a product that right now is sold out. If you recreate this DIY or any of my other ones from DIY with KB, please tag me in it on Instagram at kiva.brent because I would love to see how they turned out for you and how you put your little twist on it. If you like the video, please subscribe to DIY with KB and I'd love to connect with you on Instagram at kiva.brent. Thank you so much for watching.